Tron Air, the most trusted name in aircraft ground support equipment. Hello and welcome back to our Tron Air Hydraulic Power Unit Test Facility. If you haven't already, I'd encourage you to watch our training and commissioning and operating videos as we demonstrated on our 52 series hydraulic power unit how to commission and operate your Tron Air Hydraulic Power Unit. For today's video, we're going to be reviewing our Tron Air Dual Hydraulic Power Unit, the differences between a standard hydraulic power unit and how to operate this slightly unique unit. This hydraulic power unit is used on very specific aircraft frames, including the Gulfstream G650, G500, G600, and G700. This hydraulic power unit with a different fluid combination is also used for the Falcon family, including the Falcon 6X, 7X, and Falcon 8X. The primary difference between a Tron Air dual hydraulic power unit and our standard hydraulic power units is that there are two hydraulic systems built into one hydraulic power unit for some specific airframes. If you have our Tron Air dual hydraulic power unit and are familiar with our hydraulic power units, we'll be going over the key differences so that you feel comfortable operating this Tron Air unit as well. If you haven't already or you're unfamiliar with our Tron Air power, hydraulic power units, again, refer back to our training, commissioning, and operational videos using our 52 series, as this video will only focus on the differences between this unit and a standard hydraulic power unit. As you can see, our hydraulic panel is very similar to our standard HPU series frames. The key difference is two hydraulic systems, noted in red for system one, and in blue for system two. The Tron Air Dual Hydraulic Power Unit is a two-pump system with two unique hydraulic systems that are maintained separately. In order to start the unit, we'll ensure that the selector valves are in the proper position for the maintenance procedure being performed. Horizontally, we're in the hydraulic reservoir unit, and vertically, we're in the aircraft reservoir. The two selector valves are again noted by the label and the red color for System 1 and the blue color for system two. On the rear of the unit, we again see two pressure systems, filters and ball valves, and two return systems. System one, again, is notated by the red placard and the label here. So we have the system one pressure system and the system one return system. Blue system two, we have the system two pressure filter and ball valve, and the system two return filter and ball valve. When operating the unit, it is critical to move these ball valves together while the unit is not powered up. So if we open the pressure system, pressure ball valve on system one, we want to ensure that system one's return ball valve is also open. If we close the ball valve on system one, we will also close the, ball valve, the return ball valve on return system one. It's very critical that these two valves are opened and closed together while the unit is not powered up. The same applies to system two. We open and close these two valves together and ensure that if the pressure system is open, the return ball valve is also open. And if we close the pressure ball valve, we also close the return ball valve. If you're testing on the aircraft, after connecting the hoses and opening the ball valves for the hoses connected to your aircraft, you're ready to start the hydraulic power unit. After connecting your hoses and opening all pressure and return ball valves for the hoses connected to the aircraft, ensure that the bypass valves for both system one and two are in the fully open position. The bypass valve is in the fully open position when turned fully counterclockwise and is closed when turned clockwise fully. We'll take the bypass valve out to the fully open counterclockwise position prior to starting the hydraulic power unit. To start the unit, Hit the start button and observe flow on the system one and system two flow meters as the unit turns on. The power light will indicate that the electric motor is running and the unit is on. To adjust flow on system one, adjust the flow control for system one, turning counterclockwise to increase flow and clockwise to decrease flow, observing flow rate on the flow meter just above the flow control unit. Similarly, system two has a dedicated flow control, turning counterclockwise to increase flow rate and clockwise to decrease flow rate, as seen on the system two flow meter directly above the valve. 
After adjusting your flow rates, you can close the bypass valve to adjust pressure. As you close the bypass valve on system one, flow will reduce to zero and pressure will climb to the preset pressure setting as observed on the system one pressure gauge. To adjust pressure on system one, adjust the pressure increase knob, turning clockwise to increase pressure and counterclockwise to decrease pressure. Labels are on the unit just in front of the valve to ensure that you're turning in the correct direction to achieve the desired result. Adjusting the pressure can be observed on the pressure gauge until you've achieved the preset pressure setting. After adjusting system one pressure, you may also close the bypass valve on system two to adjust the system two pressure. As we close the bypass valve on system two, we'll see that flow will drop to zero on the flow meter and pressure will rise to the preset pressure setting. The same controls exist on system two just in front of the pressure gauge to adjust the pressure to a preset pressure setting. After adjusting the pressure and flow with the bypass valves closed, you're now ready to test on the aircraft performing your hydraulic actuations. After you're completed with testing on the aircraft, it is necessary to open the bypass valves to relieve any residual pressure on the HPU. We'll first open system one to fully relieve all pressure on the unit prior to shutdown. Similarly, we'll then open System 2's bypass valve to again relieve all pressure within System 2 before shutting down the unit. It's critical to always start and stop the unit with the bypass valves in the open position. After opening your bypass valves, if you've completed testing, you can press the stop button before going to the rear of the unit to close all of your ball valves. After shutting down the unit, we'll ensure that all ball valves are in the closed position which is the horizontal position of the handle. Again, it's critical not to adjust these pressure and return ball valves while operating the unit. When you're ready to connect to the aircraft, you open these prior to operating. And after shutting down the unit, you close these ball valves prior to storing the unit. After disconnecting the hoses from the aircraft, the self-circulation kit located on the side of the unit allows you to wrap your hoses around the hose hangers staying within the drip tray on the side before connecting your quick disconnects to the self-circulation kit. The self-circulation kit allows you to run the hydraulic power unit, decontaminating fluid, and is also an excellent way to store your hoses when not in use. Additional features included in the unit are a high fluid temperature gauge that will shut the unit down, preventing any thermal damage to the hydraulic fluid in the unit, a soft start motor starter and voltage phase monitor, ensuring that the rotation of the motor is correct and the correct voltage is applied to the electric motor. The reservoir level high and low alarms are also standard on the unit. They will ensure that the proper amount of hydraulic fluid is included in the reservoir and the unit will not start if there's either a high or low alarm. The last alarm included on the unit is the clogged pressure filter indicator. This light will illuminate if there's a clog in the pressure filter indicating that it's time to change the pressure filters. It's not a hard shutdown and you just push to reset that light. If the light continues to come on during operation, you know it's time to replace your filters. Another standard feature of our Tron Air dual hydraulic power unit is the electric reservoir service pump. We'll show the, the hose on the rear of the unit that can be connected to the reservoir of the aircraft to service it with hydraulic oil before or after any testing. The electric reservoir service pump has a dedicated filter and line to connect directly to the hydraulic reservoir of the aircraft for servicing before or after testing with the hydraulic power unit. After connecting the hose for the electric reservoir service unit, simply hold down the fill switch to engage the electric reservoir service pump. The light just above the switch will light up indicating that the electric reservoir service pump is flowing, and this will provide a half gallon a minute of fluid to service the aircraft reservoir. Thank you for watching and learning how to operate our Tron Air dual hydraulic power unit. This video is not intended to replace any training or reading of the operating service manual, but it serves to highlight the differences between our Tron Air dual hydraulic power unit and our standard one system hydraulic power units. For more information, contact product support at tronair.com or call 419-866-6301.